We just made um, an awesome wild game ham brine that you can also use on domestic uh, hams and uh, a lot of different things. But we've got all the ingredients in here. You can check it out on the uh, Hunt Chef page for that ingredient list. We might even put them in the comments on the sure. uh, yeah. Mountaintop YouTube channel in the next day or two. But we're going to make kind of an unconventional brine here tonight. Sorry about that. That's okay. So you got your bird. Yeah. You got your birds. Got birds. You bird. punch your tags. Punch tags and punch. Now what do you do? So. What do we do? Uh, what do we do? We shake we hands. We shake congratulate hands. you. We shake hands. <laughs> I want you to get that 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 stuff over there out here and talk to folks. I'm actually going to run this down to the freezer, pop okay. it in there, and let it cool down while you do that. So I got a question for you guys out there, you, you uh, turkey hunters that do this more than I do. Um, so Mike, we talked about it here earlier this week. So uh, the second tom I took, when you measure a beard. What is, is it the longest strand, is it the longest three strands? We'd love to know what you think. Mike, if you want to bring that camera a little closer. Um, so this bird, when I killed him, had three of them, but now there's still one still intact. You can see he rolled around. And the longest strand is 14 inches long. Um, so we, we don't know how you score them out there, if it's the longest strand, longest three strands, whatever you guys think. And I just want to show you the hooks on this bird as well. Um, this, this bird is the, definitely the biggest single bearded bird I've ever killed in the state of Pennsylvania. And I've been, uh, I killed my first turkey here when I was 13. <clears throat> so, with that being said, we'd love to hear your feedback out there. Secondly, the most interesting part of the story of how I killed this bird, and you guys will see, for, for those of you that tuned into Mountaintop Outdoors YouTube channel in the last couple days, we released the bird I shot on Saturday, yesterday, right Mike? Was it yeah. yesterday? So yesterday we released that hunt. I will release this bird's hunt um, here probably Sunday or Monday of this week. I would have never killed this bird, and if you would have asked me this five years ago, I said, yes, I'd never kill this bird if I didn't have a scope on my shotgun. Why? Well, the way that it happened, well, I guess I would have if I wasn't filming. Let me take that back, if I wasn't filming. So I was self-filming, the camera was between my legs, and I had my gun pinned against the tree with my knee. <clears throat> so as the hens worked over to me, they were from me to the, the Hunt Chef camera right now, and I thought, there's no way this is ever going to work. This is never it's really work. close. It's really close, camera, gun. You know, I'm a big dude. I didn't have a real big tree, but there was a bush there. I think the bush is what saved me. <laughs> This bush was to my left, big green bar bush. The bush. Thank you. Uh, and what happened was these hens bedded down in front of me, and I had to wait till the whole flock had moved past me. And you guys will see, I did review the footage today. I did get it. This gobbler steps out at like six yards, 10 max, and walks all the way around me from 9 o'clock till 2 o'clock. And at 2 o'clock, as I was swinging the camera on him, I decided when he goes behind this big hickory, with one hand, and I brought the gun to show you what I did. So this it's unloaded, was, right? It's unloaded. It's unloaded. We're good. Uh, my grounding turkey gun. And I had it down here, right? And all I did was with one hand, you'll hear on the video, you heard my safety click in the middle of my chest. In my lighted cross here, I saw his head hit the top of the bead, and boom. And as you will see, the turkey rolled. Uh, now, if, with a bird that close, if any of you, uh, you don't have to be a gun aficionado out there to know, yeah. with a shotgun, you have to keep your cheek right here to get down the, the bead. No, there's no way I would have been able to do that. Um, so, the, to me, without a turkey scope, I don't kill this bird. He makes it to the next group of trees. I never see him again. I'm mm -hmm. here on Hunt Chef Line, Tanya. I almost had two in two days. Instead, we're going, we're about to pluck a turkey. <laughs> We are indeed about to pluck a turkey. Get that thing up here. Okay, Jay, how much did he weigh? Uh, Hunt Chef, what was the official weight on that bird? Well, minus both um, feet, the beard, and the fan, he weighed 19.68 pounds. So it was uh, probably pushing 20 and a half, 21 pound bird all day long. And you're about to see the, the actual deal here. There he is in all his glory. I think you shot him in the head, dude. Surprises me, actually, because it was really. <laughs> so, um, I have now at this point in my hunting career, a lot of people would be like, you got to get the guts out of him, you got to get the guts out of him, you got to get the guts out of him. Well, if you have a big enough, cold enough cooler, and I don't mean like uh, uh, an ice chest or Coleman or anything along those lines, if you have a cooler, forced air, big enough, um, you get them in their hole and you get them cooled down and everything's absolutely fine. So this bird was harvested early yesterday morning, right? Yep. And I took, Jay brought it straight to me. We put it in a big cooler, 
cooled it down. So the uh, the insides, you know, the guts are still in this bird, but it's absolutely fine. And you're going to see that here in a little bit because we're going to um, remove these the wings at the uh, at this joint right here. Pull them off, and then we're going to start plucking on this bird. And by the time we're done plucking and, and BSing and talking to you guys and hopefully taking some questions, we're going to um, have this bird plucked and then submerge it in the brine and start pumping it full of that brine. And then it's going to soak. So tonight's Tuesday night, Wednesday, Thursday. So I think once we inject this bird, especially in the legs, and it soaks um, Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, we're going to pull it out we're going to smoke it. Friday morning along with the venison ham that we Mike and I marinated yesterday on a little video clip So you want to watch for that coming up soon and I can't wait to Friday night's Facebook live here without Jay because he's going on vacation So I'm gonna have his smoked turkey and my smoked deer ham and no Jay so I got, maybe I'll have the kids over. That'll maybe they'll save me one. a piece, you know what I mean? Because right now I'm salivating thinking about it. Like mm, there's drool running down the side of my mouth we'll here. We'll see. So we got some gloves here. We're gonna, we're gonna glove up and we're gonna start, we're gonna start getting these uh, two wings off and then we're gonna start plucking. So I've never personally ever been part of plucking a turkey. So I'm really excited about this. So I've never ever done it cold. So this, we're gonna find out if this is a really good idea or a really bad idea. Um, typically in the woods, you know, you have a little length of twine or rope or something in your pack and you can put it around, you know, the, the feet under the spurs, hang the bird up upside down while it's still warm and just start yanking the feathers off um, right there in the field wherever you're at. When I was a kid growing up with my granddad, whether it was turkeys, geese, ducks, chickens, whatever the case was, feathered uh, uh, dinner, we took and um, boiled water on the stove inside and brought it out and put it into buckets. And then I sat on a chopping block stump usually and dunked these things into the bucket. And that did a lot of things. Now I'm thinking back as a chef, you know, it sanitized the, uh, the skin with that boiling water and also helped to uh, loosen the feathers up on the carcass as well. So I'm gonna try and find this wing joint right here, Jay. So you started in the wing joint. Yeah, I just want to get these guys out of the way because, you know, other than, no, you're going to help me borax these things yep. uh, to use for fly down Nice in the mornings, right? We can do that. So, yeah, what he's talking about, guys, is an early morning at, at daybreak, uh, Hunt Chef and I have done some turkey hunting together. I, uh, I do a fly down call as a lot of high pressure birds. If you can barely call at them, that's one of the best things to do. Get your early morning couple tree elves out there, your gobbles, get them a little fly down and feather against a tree in the leaves, whatever, and onward march. Onward march. Very good. Sit there a long time and be patient. That's the lesson that I got out of this. Cause yeah. I obviously wasn't We waiting. tried being patient with my son yesterday and it just, you know, the bigger they get, the harder they're gonna be. And I'll apologize in advance now to a young lady named Heather Browner. Um, She's watching. Is Jeff. she? Yeah. Well, All right. Heather helps me keep the uh, Hunt Chef Live set immaculate. Can I start plucking? Start plucking. Heather, there might be a few feathers floating around the set tomorrow. I'm not quite sure. But, uh, well, I'm pretty sure. There's going to be a few feathers floating around it. She actually asked me earlier this evening, hey, you need some help to set tomorrow? I'm like, I think I'm going to. I'm pretty sure I'm going to. probably a good day, actually, just thinking about it. That's funny. Probably a good day. Hey, so anybody out there, um, give us some comments, give us some feedback. You Have guys, you ever plucked a turkey? Have you ever plucked a per turkey? Perky? Perky? And if so, how'd you do it? How'd you pull it off? Do you do it in the field? You do it at home? You do it with a bucket of hot water? Um, I, got, I got something funny for you, Chef, when you're ready. <laughs> oh, I'm ready for something funny. How many people ever heard of peacock, a wild peacock on game lands in Greene County? What? A wild peacock? Well, I don't mean wild. Obviously, obviously someone brought it there, planted it there, whatever, but me right. and a buddy. Who is, my buddy is an officer of the law as well, so no BS. He'll attest to it. We heard something, and he said, oh, there must be a guy down there wanting locator calls. I said, that's a peacock, dude. And I said, that's the best peacock I call I've ever heard. <laughs> that's peacock call I've ever heard. So, we It'd got be the, the best peacock call I've never heard. Yeah. So, we got to uh, hunt a little more, hunted out the ridge, hunted back down the ridge. 
And this thing just keeps making this noise. And I said, man, this guy's a really bad hunter, but he makes one heck of a peacock call. Because who would be walking around the woods peacock calling in circles? And that's basically what was going on by sound. And as we topped the ridge and looked down through the woods, right hand you got a peacock. <laughs> Did you call the peacock in? Well, that was my question. Are peacocks legal in Pennsylvania State Game Lands? Because my guy was reading on my phone and book couldn't find a rule on peacocks. I thought the rule was that if it wasn't native to the state of Pennsylvania, that it was Free game. fair game. Exactly what we said. I should have brought you a peacock, Chef. Dang it. But I know where he's at. How many other Facebook Live, YouTube Live videos have cooked peacock? Hmm. We can go back and get him. Especially awesome. if there's no close season. We can double down and... We can plug a peacock next Yeah. Time. Wow. All right, we got a little rip in the skin here. I think it took a BB, so I'm going to try and work gently around that. I'm not sure something to do. It's all right. So as I said, and I want to throw a disclaimer out there before we find a bunch of BB holes through this body, because I actually have no idea where I hit this turkey. I'm pretty sure he shot in the head. It looked pretty banged up. I, uh, I did a swing and shoot. It's like a dance, right, Mike? Swing and shoot. Swing, swing and shoot. shoot. Yeah, there, there won't be any feathers to clean up tomorrow at all. We got this under no, control. Oh, yeah. To be quite honest, we're plucking this thing pretty fast. Yeah, it's a lot easier. Than I it, thought it's it was going it's to be. so much easier than I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to be there was an opportunity it was going to be great or a complete disaster, and I'm so glad that we're on the side of great right now. Except right here in this wing, right here in this wing. So just to reiterate, all we did was take this turkey and chill it. Yeah, chill it well. In a, in, a, in a very cold Bend environment. Air. I'm sure that fan lots has of, a lot Lots of moving air. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know that that would have worked in like a regular normal fridge. Somebody say something funny, Mike. <laughs> uh, I can't wait. Uh, one of our great friends would like to hear your best peacock call. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, that's all on you because I, uh, I really don't know. Well, i be honest with you, I can't make a peacock call in my mouth. If I thought I could, I would. Uh, all I know to say is, peacock! <laughs> That's all I got. Was that Nick? No. Okay. Mikey. Mikey! Oh! Crazy cowboys in the house. Did he kill a bird? Has he been out? I haven't talked to him in weeks. Mikey, you doing any luck? Got any luck to kill a bird yet or what, bud? So another viewer said he skinned his first bird and dipped his second one in water at 155 degrees. Oh. Yeah. I'm thinking... Just going back to my youth, um, you know, the hot water thing works great and again helps to uh, sterilize the skin. As uh, I don't think we're gonna have any issue with that here, especially the way we chilled it and then going into brine with the cure salt, um, lots of kosher salt, and we're cooling that brine down right now in the freezer downstairs. I don't know, Jay. So I, I got a uh I got a shout out to TSS here after looking where I hit this bird. Because <laughs> it didn't take a lot of BBs. Right. But it did a good job. That's right. Terminal. So if you guys aren't familiar Terminal with... Terminal performance. Yeah, if you guys aren't uh, familiar with TSS, it's it's like five times heavier than lead. And it's looking like I hit this bird in the upper back to neck area, high neck. Um, which makes sense because, like I said, I was looking through the scope, barely. And the gun was in my chest, and it dropped the bird in his tracks, as you will see on the video. And the density of those rounds, is that the proper verbiage, sir? Sure. Knocked this bird off his feet, no problem. Bam. Well, at six yards, I kind of hope it would. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That would be the expectation. I'm so sure. excited to show you guys this video. I mean, it is epic. I, I filmed them fly down from about 150 yards out, and they ended up at six yards for the shot. And I feel you like must have been talking pretty sweet to him. Well, it worked out. You know, you get like got his girlfriend's over there. His girlfriend, his mom was so mad at me. Was well, she? She got to the area, and then when she got to the area, her other girlfriends were like, we'll just hang out here. Actually, let's take a nap or whatever. And uh, they decided to have to sit down and wait on old uh, Tom here to get there. And Tom taking his time, showing off. And if any of you do any filming out there, self-filming, whatever, I do recommend um, for the self-film at home, without having to play the tripod or everything, the Tacticam is pretty sweet. Had it on the ah. side of my gun. Doesn't, uh, doesn't take much to press record on those. 
But for those that you do a little more than that, uh, there's a sleep timer on my camera. You guys have heard it here on the set. It goes to sleep automatically. I think it's set on 20 minutes. I watched this bird for so long, my, my camera shut off right in the middle when he's like 10 yards gobbling oh. behind this bush. He gobbles one time, and my camera shuts off. And then I turn it back on, and as I turn it on my peripheral, right here behind the bush, I saw him go, look up as my camera went, beep, beep. And I was like, no, that's probably it too. How many ways can I screw this hunt up? Right? <clears throat> Mikey says not yet. Oh, uh, good luck out there. Hey, head over to uh, Shrocks. I saw a big one in that bottom down below the hay bales. Just saying. Big old white head. Big old white head. Calling your name. So, so, watching you guys pluck this reminds me of a story when I was a kid. We kind of, we were, my dad and some friends were into duck hunting quite a bit. And they went out one day, this is before I got to hunt. And they went out one day and brought a couple ducks home and decided that they, we were going to pluck them. But if you all notice all these little, all these little fuzzy feathers. All the down feathers. Yeah, well, you know, a duck has a lot more yeah. than, than that turkey does. And somebody thought it'd be a great idea to maybe singe those feathers off in, the, in a fire. <laughs> I highly would advise you not Disregard. to do that. Yes, Disregard. Disregard. That. Singeing That's, feathers. Um, I'm pretty sure somebody got yelled at that night by my mom and it wasn't me for once. Ta-da! It, it smelled rather, rather bad. Burning duck feathers. That's got to smell terrible. Just like... How was your week been? Weekend. Uh, well, the weekend was busy. Weekend was good. Um, you know, Warner, my number one son and I are still after that big old gobbler back here on Ridge, not far from us. I took a buddy of mine. Scott Cummings in the house. I haven't seen his name yet. Sir. I haven't seen his name. He must be really busy. Anyhow, uh, great buddy of mine, outdoor writer in the Midwest home in the state of Indiana. Um, who's your guy? Who's your guy? He's originally from, what do you say? Johnstown. 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 So PA born and bred. And he was here with us, was it last Friday? It smelled really good. <laughs> he did. Cologne Cowboy, Captain Cologne, what I call him? Like Something like that. We thought our compliance service friend smelled good until he yeah, until the he Midwest showed. Cologne in here. Man, dude, dude had it going on. He did. Anyhow, um, we went right behind the house first thing here, and just two nights prior, I had roosted two birds up here. Didn't go after them the next morning, just wanted to know they were around, so I felt pretty strongly that Scott and I would get on them. Didn't. Went and checked out on another piece of property. Nothing. Went and checked another piece of property. Saw one strutting, and made a move, made a setup, and got that bird to gobble one time. And that was it. He was with four hens, and uh, he didn't like what I had to say to him, so he moved on. So, got done with Scott about 8.30, and took the, my son Warren back out, along with Mike. He was nice enough to come run a camera just in case we got it done. But we didn't. That bird we've been chasing. So, he's been by himself now around 1 in the afternoon, and not really talking, but sure strutting. And... Uh, I don't know. I think the, he's going to be a, somewhere between 12.45 and 3 p.m. Because you can hunt all day in Pennsylvania. Yeah, well, now you can. Just haven't started, what, Monday, right? Yes, Yesterday? Yep. and Or Saturday, whatever it was. We only sat till noon on Saturday. I'd go to work. But I'm uh, pretty excited to get back out after that big one because, you know, Warren, we've had three really close calls on... on uh, on four different big birds. Uh, the first one we didn't get done because dad messed up with the uh, mission crossbow and having my boy ready. You wanna get some of those little ones off yeah, that? Yeah. They're up my nose. I know I'm gonna start sneezing soon. We'll give him a good rinse before we put him in the brown. You guys think it's funny me trying Look to Look how big this up. bird is. I mean, you get all these hairs, hairs. All these little feathers off. Hey, we're doing pretty good here, Jay. Yeah, they just keep flying off on me. It's like flying off. It's like a joke. It's like a sitcom going there. <laughs> Look at this. They're flying everywhere as I was trying to sweep them up. I was like, this is sitcom. Comedy here all day, people. We'll have to listen. How many of you out there are laughing at, at two grown men plucking a bird uh, with bird feathers flying around trying to catch them out of the air? That's funny right there. Whoever. I'm telling you. Especially during the COVID. The COVID. Hey, COVID's opened back it up, backing up finally. We're backing, opening back up as a country. Well, it's high time, I think. 
Um, everybody's got their own opinion. Uh, we still see a lot of people. And we respect that. Oh, gosh, absolutely. I mean. Different ages, different well, cases. Well, but that's the thing, you know. I mean, if you have, you know, anybody in your circle that could be susceptible, I mean, absolutely. Mask, uh, gloves, whatever, whatever it takes, you know, to keep your circle safe. But, you know, that's kind of the, the point that I've taken is that it's common sense and it's freedom of choice yep. as far as I'm concerned. And it's not um, having it shoved down your throat by somebody sitting in a state or federal capital. Um, I get the you know initial hunker down. We don't know what's coming, but you know regardless, you know the COVID thing. I don't know. I'm not going to make this a political deal. But I so anyhow, so Warren, number one son has had. <clears throat> I said three close calls. First time was my fault. And then he's had two hits, but it's all been feathers. So he's been uh, officially named the uh, Turkey Barber of Chalk Hill, Pennsylvania. <laughs> because speaking he, of barbers, man, I need one. He has given these birds some haircuts. Um, one big tom, I mean big tom, every bit this size. I mean that thing had a rope on it, and uh, he shot straight at it, strutting. And it just caught the feathers. This with the crossbow it's and mechanical broadhead. Turkeys have so much feathers. And those feathers at full strut just kind of caught yeah. that broadhead opening up and just pushed it off like a shield. So, and then the second one, he cut it just right across the front of the chest. Didn't draw any blood. And uh, it's pretty interesting. Yeah, we worked Got it all on film. Sooner or later, you guys will see it all. Yeah, we work pretty good together. Yeah. Now, the, the pain in the butt's going to be... There's still some quills and there's still some little guys. How, 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 let me ask you this, Chef. How, how uh, important is it to get every quill out? Well, of I mean, the quills, I don't know. Um, probably pretty important. And I might have to go back over this thing with some forceps, but we can do what we need to do tonight um, here in just a minute. You know, a little bit of feathers once it comes out of the brine because I want it to um, set in the fridge for a while and get that exterior dried out and form that pellicle on there to for to uh for the smoke to adhere to so if i need to get surgical with some forceps off my fishing vest then um i'll absolutely do that and some of these bigger quills that seem to yeah they break stay off yeah yeah well i can go back and get these no problem see that little guy right there uh little bugger right there i can go back and get those with the forceps pretty easy there's not a whole lot of them and in general to me and correct me if I'm wrong, this came off fairly easy. I mean, it was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Yeah. Let's put it that way. So, um, Jay. Sir. It's at this point, I feel like I need to decapitate your bird. Hey, have at it. <laughs> Would you like to do the honor? I'm going to have a drink of beer, actually. Yeah, have a drink of beer. All right. So, with this TSS busted up neck, yeah, you definitely caused some serious trauma here. Oh, yeah. Now I see it. Night, night. Rest in peace. Been an honor, sir. Been an honor. Can't wait to taste it. So now we can talk about um, evisceration, i.e., getting the, the innards out of it. So you can. Uh oh. We have, we have a guest. We have uh, a guest. We have a guest. Uh oh. Jay went sideways. Uh oh. Hey. In the house. Look out, folks. Guest chef. Sexiest guest chef on planet Earth, right there. Welcome. Hi, guest chef. Nice to see you. How's it going? Two so, men on buck on a turkey. So again, we'll come. I'll come back with the forceps and get all the little hairs off of this guy. But you can see how dry that skin is, and you've seen obviously many times in the woods. You come across <laughs> that dusting spot where the birds get on there and they flap their wings and they get dust up under all their feathers. Um, that's how the turkey, you know, almost always is. That's that skin's real dry. You know, so don't be alarmed whenever you. Uh, I got another question. Shoot. I found a dust spot by the peacock of the dust bowl. Oh boy. Does the peacock dust bowl? Good question out there. That was a big one. Big, big dust bowl. Very big dust bowl. And 100 yards from that peacock strut. Huh. In a Green County game line, let's just say. <laughs> yeah, back to being serious. Was he hanging out with a magical goat? Hey, listen. I'm Now Now I'm going to text the game word and ask him if it's legal. Next week I'm going to try to bring his peacock. <laughs> oh boy. All right, so the point of the breast, we're just going to come up um, one side, then up the other. 
get it right around, and then we're gonna come down the inside of these thighs. Turkey guts never smell very pleasant. No, to be honest though, the color looks great. Yeah. I'm no, really... I told you, I mean, you, you just, you have to have it cold enough. So impressed with this, to be I honest. Mean, you have to have I it cold I never enough. thought in my wildest dreams as a redneck hunter that you could take a bird and chill it for this amount of time and it'd still look like that inside. Yeah. So, you know, you got the, uh, the back door here. So these thigh bones, there's really, there's a gap between them. So what you want to do, um, it's different than on a deer. A lot of guys use that butt out tool or everybody's got a little different but scenario. Out. Butt out, I've never used one. But, and then I'm just gonna break through the skin, but not the uh, intestine. So you can see we've got that loosened up there. How's this for a live? <laughs> Hey, where, where are all the medical students at tonight? To me, this uh, is so informational, though. Derek, have you ever seen this done in turkey, a wild turkey? No. Me neither. I told him that earlier. Yeah. There so, at any rate, um, so we've got, we're opening up on this end. Now, on the other, and we're going to pull this out here in just a moment. Okay. Yeah, so, on the other end, um, just be with me. Okay. So, there's a lot of really kind of fleshy feeling stuff here. But when that turkey eats, they eat everything almost whole, almost everything whole. And you know, turkeys, chickens, um, anything that's, any poultry is kind of grazing like that, they'll eat stones, rocks. Because mm -hmm. they get those rocks down in their, in their gizzard and that muscle goes like this yeah. and uses the rocks to grind up their food and then, you know, put it on through their, their digestive system. Um, but what, you know, freaks people out a lot of times is, I need to sharpen my knife, Derek. I've used my Bonds Creek boning knife here so many times. I'm gonna get an edge back on. Well, this bird has been eating good, Jay. They're really fat. Now look, this is what I wanted to show you. So you see the whole kernels of corn in here? Wow, look at that. He's been in somebody's backyard. That's crazy. And I know you're on the game lands, but a lot of folks still run feeders year round. Yeah, there's a house so you, park from there. So you look and see those full um, kernels of corn in that craw, okay? So the craw is, they, they eat this stuff whole, it goes down in their craw, and then they keep working it down, working it down into the gizzard. And that's where, um, again, everything like this, whether it's bugs, corn, acorns. Now I know a piece of, was there. Piece of green grass. There you go. Um, it all works into here and then feeds down in um, through there. So they hold it here and then they work it down in and digest it from there. So pretty neat little deal with the way these um, foraging birds work. Um, chickens are the same way, but that, uh, that curl, trying to get a finger in it. <clears throat> I was just going to say too, I was going to throw a plug out there to the PA Game Commission. The, right there. The logging road on that piece of game land was all clover, and the buddy I was with was like, my god, it looks like, wow. food. Looks like food plot, and I was like, nice job, PA. This is very nice, I, I would consider it food plot, that's how nice it was. Awesome. So, so this crawl, it's like a big sack right here, okay? That all their the food comes down their wind or their not their windpipe but their throat and holds in this sack or this pouch right here, right here. Then you can see the hole right here. It's almost like a throat, the continuation of their throat. And so they can eat and fill all this up. And then over time, they get, it's almost like a cow. You know, cows have four stomachs, they're, they're ruminants. Um, deer, you know, lay down and chew their cud. Well, it's similar in the way of when you're, you know, or wild turkeys, your pheasants, uh, your grouse. So they'll, fill, they'll feed and they'll fill this up, and then whether they're chilling out, um, bedding, whatever the case might be, and they'll continue to work this down the throat into their, uh, I've said this word nine times, it's my favorite part on a bird, gizzard. gizzard, thank you very much. Welcome, sir. And then that gizzard with those stones in it, because they'll eat stones along with all this food, and it grinds it up in that gizzard, and then it passes it on to the rest of their digestive system. So it's a pretty neat deal. It's almost like a chipmunk's cheeks. Right, mm -hmm. they'll they'll get all the nuts and everything in there, berries, whatever they're they're eating, and then they'll go back, they'll chill out, and they'll they'll figure it out, and that's just what these turkeys do. So a lot of folks maybe aren't familiar with it, or they've seen that, and they're like, oh my god, what ha what's happening? It's like there? Gestures. I, I, in there. I was always really good at gestures, that's why I got the word. Right. So at any rate, we're just going to try and clean, and again, we'll get this guy back in the sink under some cold water, give him a really good rinse in and out. But I wanted to show you this end um, of the bird. So you know the. The breast is right here on either side on this frame. And what we want to do is this sack, this craw, we're going to cut as much of this out of here right now as we can. Ooh, Jay, you caused a little bit of carnage in here, you and your TSS. 
Thanks, TSS. So this isn't skin. This is that cross sack inside. I'm going to pull that out without trying to get rid of any neck meat or anything. Look at the fat in this bird. Look at that yellow fat. So somebody, whether it's a game commission or the neighbor, has been feeding that thing pretty good. And we're just about... It's so slippery, it's hard to grab a hold of all of it. The peacock thing is making sense as the more we go on here. Yeah. I'm thinking the peacock is the neighbor's pet now. All right, you can see it's uh, it's windpipe there buried underneath all that. We're going to get this extra stuff out. Now, this is something, you know, I would kind of wish my kids were here tonight. Um, I don't know if the girls would have hung through it, but Warren is kind of an anatomy student. He'd have been like, oh, that's so cool. So hopefully he can put that big one down and he and I can do it together. But you can see, Jay, he put a... Got a Oh, pretty yeah. nice, pretty nice hit right there. Now we're getting underneath that uh, that cross sack and close to where you know, kind of that internal organ holding situation. And I just want to loosen this up so we can pull it all off the other end, hopefully. But you know, it's it's never perfect. No matter how many of these things I do, and I almost never do them upside down and away from myself for a camera. <laughs> I guess I should try and get the other camera in here too. Sorry, guys. Um, but one of the easiest ways to do this, as I mentioned earlier, is you get a rope, a uh, section of rope or cord, and put it around those those hind feet and hang it. Hang this bird from a tree, gravity. upside down, gravity. I'm always gravity. talking about gravity. From the plucking yeah. to this part. Gravity and so when it's upside down, you know, hanging there, and you open up this uh, back end like we did just a minute ago, <clears throat> Um, nothing's gonna fall out at you. So you've got all the room in the world to work around, cut around the uh, the anus there, get that all loosened up. And then when you come here, all this stuff that I kind of dug up really just starts to fall out. And you can just, you know, again with gravity, you can kind of pull. I always talk about when you're cutting meat, mm -hmm. keep this hand dry. And that goes for um, field dressing or, you know, cutting things, getting them ready for the table. So imagine this bird hanging upside down. All this is like open it up, it's just starting to fall. And you can grab and pull, and it's a lot easier than the uh, situation I'm working with right now. All right, so. <clears throat> I'm learning so much here. Pretty well say. opened up. You guys can see the, uh, the breastbone on either side here right now. So this side and this side. Don't worry about that bloodshot again. Um, a good rinse in cold water is going to take care of a lot of that and then a brine, the soaking in the brine will take care of the rest. So we've got most of that um, feed out of there. You can still see a little bit. I die to know it's some kind of little like seeds. I don't know if there's grass seeds, that looks clover like, seeds. That looks like tree pollen to me, like a tree. Something. Well, but they're hard. Oh. Anyhow. Hey Derek, if you don't mind, give YouTube lot a look in there. Just so they can see it. This is a cool thing. Jeff, <clears throat> Matt wanted to know how long you, after we brine the bird, or brine anything, how long do you leave it in the refrigerator to create that pinnacle? Um, the pellicle um, is, is pretty much overnight. Anywhere in that 8 to 12, 16 hour range, um, you're not, you're not going to do anything bad there and it, once you get to at least that 8 hour mark. But so you can see the, uh, the wishbone here, wishbone here, and we're opened into that chest cavity for the most part. Um, I am going to put my finger in there and just kind of push around a little bit. You've know, got the heart and its sack, the sacrum, isn't that what it's called? Here at the top. I don't know. I should have gone to medical school. Anyhow, I didn't have time because I was cooking fried fish at Long John Silver's. But you can see where that neck, I mean, holy smokes, look at this thing coming all the way down in there. You know, so when that bird's down and they're doing its thing or it stands up and it puts that head way in the air, it's working, you know, and that head, you know, is clear up here. So it's a pretty neat deal. I mean, I, I love wild turkeys. They're so delicious. They're so fun to hunt. They're so amazing and beautiful to watch. But any of that extra stuff inside from that cross sack, you can just keep pulling it out of there. And again, when you hang this bird, I talk about hanging upside down. Don't hang it where the feet are here, like done chest height in front of you. Hang it where the feet are up here so that when you're working at, at this part at the end, that really, you know, you're about eye level or, or at least chest level, you're not on the ground. So flipping it around. Jay, I'm going to give you the honors. All right. What you want to do is just put your hand all the way into the top. Okay. I can feel the heart up in there right now. Okay. And not like you're going to rip um, the crown jewel out of the... Uh, you want just the heart or you want the heart? I want it all. Let's pull. There you go. Nice job. 
So look how nice and easy that came out, like Chef was saying. I got um, some carnage in there. You already knew what happened. I did. You want the liver and the heart? Um, we're definitely going to take the heart. You don't want that piece of liver. <laughs> that bile sack busted. Anyhow, you never know what you're going to get into with a shotgun kill. Um, or even, you know, if we'd have put a rage broadhead through this bird, it could be pretty interesting, you know, if you hit it in, uh, in the middle and not just in the, uh, in the neck or something. So what I'm doing right now is scraping against the inside of the rib cage, so I'm up against the bones. And I'm just trying to get all that carnage, the, these lungs are all busted up, um, out of there. What is that, a big old turkey heart? Nice. Big old bird. Big old bird. You want these out here? Kidneys, sure. We're not gonna, I'm not gonna eat them, but okay. I've never, it's in there, it's showing everybody yeah, what yeah. a wild turkey kidney looks like. Put in my hand, so if people were field dressing a bird, like, oh my gosh, what are those? Well, that's wild turkey kidney. Wild turkey kidney. And, all right. You can take your gloves off now, I think. And then uh, if you would yep. maybe pull. If you can just take these couple dishes and set them on the floor. Yep. Gotcha. And yep. we're going to give this guy a good rinse. Sorry hit a slow spot here. Anyhow, uh, wild turkey liver tastes a lot like, uh, in my opinion, duck liver. You can see it's pretty good size. And if you had one of these, you know, you can, I almost always advise browning the liver and even just in salt water overnight in the fridge prior to cooking it because it is so, just like the heart and the, uh, where'd the craw go? Did we miss the craw? Did you blow the craw up? Lost the blood. Wow. Not the craw, the gizzard. The gizzard. Um, the part where all that corn came from. Well, it's in there. Anyhow, um, but then, I mean, how big is that turkey heart? So you think about it, you want to bring your harvest full circle and taste some real wild game. So you can clean this heart up a little bit more, take that sack off the outside. Um, you can even split it, like kind of butterfly it. Gravy. Give it a good rinse, or holy gravy. But this little sack on the outside, you'll just pop that off and cut it off. And that. there, you got a really good look. Look at that. A, uh, turkey, a wild, wild turkey, turkey heart. heart, people, right here on Hunt Chef. So, nice job, dude. Hey, thanks. So just clean that up, um, soak it in the liver after you remove the, uh, the gallbladder, which we kind of did by force. And that's okay because we've got a big chunk of liver left. Uh, brine these guys overnight in the fridge with salt water and then stick with Hunt Chef. We'll tell you how to cook those. Um, you can grill them, roast them, saute them. So this big old boy is going to get a uh, rinse. You and then we're we'll going now. Well, yeah, so we're going to get the turkey back here for rinsing. And if you want to throw the heart and the liver in here, yep. maybe set the knife in. Yep. Steve, would you mind grabbing those wings and then setting them down there, please? I don't know, somebody say something intelligent here at this point. Uh, we got, we have some, I think we have a lot of new folks in here tonight, Chef. Awesome. Well, welcome, everybody. Um, one gentleman said he was from the land of tequila. Mm, the land of tequila? Yes. Um, then we have John says, um, what's up from the Northeast? Hey, John. John, Northeast PA or no, like Northeast States? Where are, you, where are you from, bud? What state are you from? You want the other half of this tape thrown down, or? Um, yeah, just bring it on down. That'd be great. Of course, we have Jackie in the house. Mr. Hensley, we're gonna have to have Jackie into the taste tester one night here. Oh man! Oh man! You've met Jackie, right, Jay? Oh yeah. Oh, we got we have Nebraska, we Minnesota, wow, uh, Wisconsin, Michigan. Jay, have you ever hunted Michigan? I have Heck. never hunted Michigan, and uh, Big Bill invited me up to turkey hunt. Unfortunately, with COVID, it shut that down. Huh. Um, but thanks, Bill, for the invite. I mean, Michigan's a real deal. I mean, they got big whitetails. Yep. They got big bears. Yep. Lots of turkeys. Tons of waterfowl. The the you know the tradition in the Upper Midwest, like Michigan, Wisconsin. Really reminds me of the tradition in Pennsylvania. There are a lot yep. of deer hunters. There are a lot of first day of rifle season going on. Yeah. Very similar. Deer to drives. Deer drives. The state deer of Pennsylvania. Camp. A lot of tradition. Um, I feel like we're a lot of the same in the way we treat our uh, hunting traditions. John, I thought I recognized your name, Chef. We've sent John rubs twice this month. Hey. Yeah. God bless you, John. 
Everybody be like John. You need to order rubs twice a month. Keep your wild game culinary addiction going. If you guys didn't see what I just did, I put the guts in the trash can full of feathers. And what happens when you hit a big pillow, a down pillow? Woof, woof. Poof. Jay, this is a beautiful bird, man. I'm excited. I mean, it's a big, beautiful bird. It's in a, uh, a spot that's really tough to kill turkeys, too, really. There's usually a lot of guys hunt there in the first week, and I thought the second week would be good there. So I'm excited to re release this hunt to you guys on Mountain Top Outdoors YouTube once again. You can see the birds that I killed Saturday. I put it up yesterday. And then the bird that uh, we're working on today, that hunt will be up next Sunday or Monday. Epic hunt. Good time. Good luck to you guys out there. Um, hope it works out. I think the best hunting is right now because of the cold spells we've had. It went down to 21 degrees, 23 degrees here um, seven, eight days ago. And now it's uh, high as, I think, 76 this week or something like that. Something crazy. I think that gets the bird fired back up. Other than that, it's always good to have luck on your side, Chef. You know, Lady Luck is Lady uh, luck. She's always cute. welcome. Yep. In the blind, in the stand, in camp. Oh man. On the road. Oh man. On set. On set. You know, I was gonna put you to work sooner or later, dude. Yeah, we need. In that white freezer downstairs. Yeah. There's a white LEM tub with a brine in it. Would you mind bringing it for me? So this is what a live weight, um, nearly 21 pound. Um, Eastern Gobbler in Southwest PA looks like um, dressed, plucked, headless, footless, mostly wingless, wingless except for the drums. Now, as I said earlier, I am going to be very meticulous and go back and get every one of these little quills out of here, whether I'm going to use my fingers or the forceps. So when you, if you tune back in this Friday, in just uh, four more nights, um, you'll see this bird live. Um, we're going to put it in a brine, and then it'll come out of the. Uh, out of the LEM smoker, probably minutes before we go live, and we're gonna carve into this guy and see what you think then, right there. And it's pretty cool because uh, as a turkey hunter, I've been turkey hunting since I was 13, I've never seen this done. I mean, this is awesome. Thanks so much for the experience. So, um, a little cooler than lukewarm, which I would like it to be colder, but I don't wanna add any more ice to it and increase the amount of water. But what I'll do is, because it is, I think, cool enough, we're gonna put the bird in here. I'm gonna to start to inject it with the brine. Um, then we're gonna put submerge it in a pail. And we're gonna put that pail in the freezer and make sure, because the bird's still really pretty cold. Um, so right now, we're gonna go in with the turkey. Turkey in the brine. Ooh, bathtub, that's gotta feel good, yeah. right? Feel nice? It's coming full circle, that's coming what's full circle cool. here. So Jay, Sir. this is your bird. All right. I'm gonna give you some honors here. I get to use the nicest them. injector in the world. The, uh, you, oh yeah, here it is. So, but we might run into a little bit because of the thyme leaves and the sage in here. They might get stuck in the port some. Okay. So we'll just um, kind of work with that as we go. Gotcha. But at any rate, so needle, dip it down in there, pull the brine up in, and we're gonna start going through the breast. Okay. And then start into the thighs and the drumsticks gotcha. on this bird. We even throw a couple uh, pokes into the wings. But you can see, I love this needle. You would think that I created this thing or invented it. It's amazing. Um, but the ports are in the side, not in the bottom. So the, the bottom is really pointy. I've talked about this, I don't know how many times. Harrisburg, um, YouTube or Facebook Live, YouTube Live, um, on different videos, uh, on the bare hand video I did for LM Products, it's on their YouTube channel. But watch that brine just pump in because it's not coming out the end and all going to one spot. And you know, the needles that have the holes just on the ends, every time you mash it in the meat, you're shoving meat up into that, uh, into that needle, into that injection needle. So with the ports in the sides, it allows for greater disbursement because there's smaller holes that are going out the sides of the needle in nine different places rather than just one big shot out the bottom of a, a regular needle hole. And you're not shoving that tip of that needle full of meat every time that you run it into uh, your game animal, your Easter ham, whatever the case might be. Yeah, these guys are what I'm gonna get out of here. Um, but I'll work on that. I'll even, I might even pull it out of the brine for an hour tomorrow and, and work on that some more too. But you can get right down along those um, drumsticks, those shanks, oh, right into the thighs. And 
just get that brine all the way in there through that meat. How many times would you poke this bird? Um, a lot. Okay. Just as much as you think it'll it'll hold. Oh yeah. And then um, and then do it some more. I think Derek's on a booty call. What do you think? Oh, I think so. <laughs> Andrew would kill him. But so that brine, you saw we put the pink salt in to cure salt. That's going to give it um, longer. Uh, you know, pink salt is in. We use that in brines yeah. to can, uh, keep the uh, the meat longer. What, what is this term I'm looking for? Preserve. Preserve it. Oh, 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 thank you, Mike. To preserve that meat even more. And I'm glad, it, and it, I'm glad I wasn't standing over yeah, there. I would have got, got shot. You got shot. You got injected. Yes. Neck meat. Ejected. I'm um, sure. Give it the neck. Give it those wings. Right down, right down alongside that bone. Oh yeah, all the way down. Oh, I didn't either. Derek, if you're talking about winning lottery numbers, speak up. Anyhow, see, look, look how look how much that neck swelled. Yeah, check it out. That's pretty crazy. So that's all that brine in there. So we're getting that pink salt, the herbs, the salt, the sugar. All that flavor, all through the meat. I mean, that's the purpose of injection. That's the purpose of, of brining. And the injection when you brine is so you don't have bald spots. And bald spots, if you ever brine anything, hello. Um, <laughs> if you ever brine anything, like if you watch that uh, LEM video, the uh, smoked bear ham I did, there was one spot about the size of a 50 cent piece that wasn't nice and beautiful and pink right down near the femur bone and somehow no. going through this whole process that I missed and it didn't take that cure the whole way through. So it helps preserve it, it adds flavor, it aids in moisture retention so you have a juicier um, ham, juicier brine product at the end of it. <clears throat> now, that said, if you're not into um, sodium nitrite, you don't have to use it. Um, it's been around for a long, long time as a preservative for food um, it's absolutely safe and you know not big amounts so it's absolutely great to use I highly recommend it if you're doing hams but you can absolutely also omit that completely from any brine um, the, that you uh, make for your wild or domestic pretty cool right there Mike yeah getting a pump it's like it's in the gym it's like he's in the getting gym getting a pump on with gut loaded up with the creatine it's right bro turkey right now <laughs> bro turkey there it is flushing it full so again you can see the benefit of that needle with those nine ports on the sides on the three sides around it instead of that one point on the end it goes out through the meat instead of forced down in one spot and just kind of having to keep back it out when you finally pull a needle out it all shoots up out anyhow it's genius chef one of our viewers is asking about the drumsticks and he's, his, he's saying they're always tough because of the ligaments and cartilage does the brine help that Sure. Um, everything in this brine, well, not everything, the pink salt, the kosher salt, the sugar, um, all are um, tenderizers, you know, in their own right. So that is absolutely part of the deal. And one of the things that I haven't talked about that I'm really kind of saving for Friday is that I almost never, almost never ever cook wild turkey breast and legs together. Because the breast typically, if you're going to roast it or something like that, will be overdone and dry and tough before those drumsticks or the thighs are done cooking and tender. So what the difference is gonna be here is, we're gonna cook this, hang this bird. Don't even forget Mike, we're gonna hang this bird upside down. <laughs> I don't know what happened there, it came out the back. <laughs> you, you, got, you, you, you twisted a little bit and got past the, the, uh, the O-ring. Um, so we're gonna hang it upside down because in this smoker, it, it is very consistent even heat, but it's hottest in the top of the box. So the, uh, the highest heat is gonna be in um, the top of the box and that's where those um, thighs and drumsticks are gonna be. And because we're gonna smoke it slow, probably 185, 190, by the time they're done, that breast isn't gonna be dry and overcooked. And part of that reason is um, uh, because of this brine, because of the pink salt, because of the kosher salt and the sugar. So flavoring, tenderizing, and retaining moisture is key on wild game. And whether you're doing venison, turkeys, uh, wild boar, antelope, ham, mule deer ham, elk ham, whatever the case might be. And you're gonna see a lot of wild game ham recipes coming for Hunt Chef Nation because um, like I said, by 
end of August, beginning of September, I hope to have at least um, three different um, wild game focused hand brine kits out there. So all you have to do, you won't have to worry about measuring and, and, and whatnot with the ingredients, <coughs> excuse me, and sourcing ingredients. You're gonna take that one pack with everything in it, add the exact amount of water, bring it to a simmer, get it all, um, uh, he's pumped out. I, yeah, I got it. Got a Are you full? I got a funny for you. You got a funny? So this is what a Midwestern turkey looks like on the, on the, on the claw. Those 30 pound gobblers you hear about? Yeah. This is them right this there. This is them. The Eastern bird pumped full of brine. Bro gobbler. Bro gobbler is probably the same time as the uh, same size as a mature Iowan, Illinois gobbler. Yeah. That's, I get that's it. all I got. So there's two really nice knuckles of meat right here. Um, at the back, right at the bottom of the wings. Did you get either one of them? Okay. Well, that one looks good. Try this one yeah. one more time. Don't want to miss those. Oh, look at that, bro. Look at the delt swallowed bro. on this turkey. Bro. He's doing some serious uh, <laughs> barbell rows there and getting all pumped up. With his... Hello. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is live. This is live. <laughs> it's not Memorex. All right. I think you're just about there, bud. Really cool. I mean, I could do this all day. So, we're about to find out, um, and I think I already know the answer, because Mike is an incredible asset to Hunt Chef Nation. 100%. But I feel like we needed a five-gallon bucket, we got a four-gallon bucket, and I don't know if bro turkey is going to fit in this four-gallon bucket. Mike, what's your bet? No, it ain't. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to find out here in just a, in a hot minute. That's it. And don't, you, you can't do it enough. And again... Get the family involved. Get the kids, buddies. I mean, you know, we we all have beers, although we're da, 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 da. drinking right now. We ready? Drum roll, Mike. If this is gonna fit, well, here, let me get this up on okay. the table. Oh, yeah. Uh, do the might work. You're on it. It might fit. It might work. Yeah, like you might have to give it a, first two thirds. Give the crone elbow to jam it down in there. But oh I mean, man, it got heavier. It's it's a solid <laughs> thirty-five pound gobbler now. Ooh. That's actually pretty close, Mike. That's actually, actually really, really close, Mike. I apologize to Mike behind the camera for the jab because it worked. I just got to stand in your fridge. Yeah, right. Well, the good news is... You got to walk in. You know, everybody that hunts, everybody that prepares their own harvest... Should I walk in? Well, that or get on Craigslist, eBay, whatever, and find... A working but used fridge, and you can put it under a tarp outside your garage. Cool buck. Cool buck. Those guys are PA based. They know what they're doing. And then tarp it, and whenever you need it, whether it's spring or fall, or summer for fishing season, just have it. You know, just have it. So I think we're gonna need a, a little bit bigger bucket, and I didn't want to, but we're gonna have to add. So and this is one of the reasons why we're doing this right now, is to perfect these ham kits. So the exact amount of water um, I'm keeping track of here tonight, and then you can just ask your local restaurant for a four gallon mayo bucket, and put that in, put that in the fridge, Shabam. with a little more water, and you're gonna make yourself a wild turkey. And you're gonna ham, ham, turkey ham. Really, really excited about this. And so this little fancy tablecloth came from the dollar store. I think it might have cost like a dollar ninety nine, but party store, party store. But clean up. That's a lot better than just on a table, right? Hey, look, it's clean for for a dollar, dollar ninety nine. Heck, heck, four bucks is worth the cleanup that we're not gonna have to do because of this guy. All right, the feathers. Sorry, Heather. Sorry in advance, but there's a few. All right, all right, Jay. So what other? Wild turkey killing wisdom you have to impart here tonight on their live. It's not a lot of wisdom here, but I just want to remind you guys of a couple things once again that we talk about every week. The Mountaintop Outdoor Turkey Contest goes to May 31st. Uh, hashtag M Mountaintop uh, 2020, Mountaintop Turkey 2020. Um, to enter right now, winning the youth is Landon Prickett of Ohio. Ohio, I believe, is closed. Um, and West Virginia Bird is in the lead still. Um, unless I can win my own turkey contest, but I won't do that. You better not do that. Yeah, That'd not be nice. too much home cooking. That's not nice. That's not nice. And Warren's going to try. <laughs> well, I hope, he, I hope he definitely beats the bird. So, um, 
I have one other thing, or are you going to keep going? Do it. One other thing. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Here, we're talking about that. The greatest flashlight the greatest ever American made. made. In America. America made flashlight. Don't have to be smarter than the box. I just pulled off. Pulled out. Oh, well, it's slides this little thing here. Is it going to get it in or out? It slides right out. There you go. Yeah, I feel like it's this thing right here. USA manufacturer. Yeah. This sexy little kit right here. That's what that's for. Push that in. Look at that guy. Even comes with energizer batteries. Yeah. Made in America. Well, the batteries aren't in it. That's why it's not on. But this guy, I mean, this is this is all kinds of light here. Yeah, and they have the different lenses you can put in them now as well. There's a red lens and a green lens that goes in um, those lights. And I know a lot of you whitetail hunters are big on green lenses because yeah. they say that the whitetails oh, yeah. can't see the green lens. That's what I use um, as well. But we're happy to be partnered up with Maglite. We will be doing our Maglite monthly giveaway now um, for the rest of the season, all of the new year. Monthly? Every, monthly. Every Ooh. month you guys will have a chance to win a mag light, flashlight, or a, a kit giveaway um, from us in Maglight. And it's very, very simple. All you're gonna do is enter your email, uh, like the Hunt Chef page, like Smoking Eyes, like Mountaintop Outdoors, done. Very simple, Chef. And uh, we're gonna be doing lots of giveaways with Maglight. Oh, there's the red right there. It's already got it in it. Yeah. Chef, be drinking, sir. That's bright. It is bright. Sorry. But it's good. that's good when you're walking through the woods, and, and some of the lifetime on these batteries, guys, is crazy. And they, they come out with a couple different options now as well, especially the rechargeable ones. I was just reading up on them this week. Um, the rechargeable ones, I don't have one yet, but I'm excited to test them. Um, they're lasting like 40-some hours, which is crazy. Wow. I mean, so let's think. You go in the backcountry. You don't have to pack batteries. Yeah. You don't pack it a lot. You charge it like one time, and that's enough to get you through every morning. That's, that's enough for you to get your vacuum sealed, unchef approved, right? Um, Salisbury steak, come on, cooked in your jet boil on your sheep hunt, uh, which I did. This guy was so nice, thank you very much, to make for me from a sheep hunt, and I got a sheep. Nine it was days, pretty tasty. Nine days later, it was unbelievable. I mean, I was the most popular guy in sheep camp because you could smell it in my jet boil, and it was like, "What's that? That's not an MRE." And I was like, "I don't know. <laughs> I'm gonna save your half for tomorrow." <laughs> right? Yeah. Uh, Good time. So, yeah, guys, it's been a good week. Um, we killed two birds in two days. We do, I mean, we put it in plain English, and it really, um, I feel blessed. But in my mind, it was nothing but what we've been doing, wearing them out. Yeah. I'm just keeping after and wearing them Grinding out. Grinding it. Grinding it. We've been out there every morning. We barely missed a morning. And it's kind of fun looking back because you see the evolution of the stages of the season. Yeah. And I really think your best turkey hunts right now. I really do. If you guys didn't watch the video yesterday, did you have a chance to look at it? Yeah. The bird ran. Mm -hmm. 200 yards to the open timber. Like, yeah. doop, 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 doop. It's like hey, Holly, hey, where, hey, you at? where you at over there, Betty? I heard you. <laughs> and uh, all I can say from that is don't call a lot and wait. I mean, it yeah. took three hours to kill that bird. We were texting, and he was like, Yeah, bird hasn't showed up over here yet. And I was like, I just shot one on Facebook Live. Check it out. Uh, yeah. Facebook Live. This is pretty funny. Well, again, congratulations, hey, brother. Thank you, my brother. Um, so, again, stay tuned. Um, lots more um, wild game brines coming. For Hunt Chef mm -hmm. Nation, but tune in this Friday, 8:30 p.m. for the live where we pull this guy out of the smoker along with a uh, yuzu honey marinated venison ham. I'll try and save you a slice. Honey bees. Mm. If you guys find any swarms out there in local Hunt Chef Nation, it is swarm season. My bees died over the winter, unfortunately. I'm looking for a local swarm. Call me, message Hunt Chef page, something. Uh, message Mike behind the camera, anybody. And I will come safely remove them and put them in a nice home where they can provide honey for the hunt chef set for the season. Come on, we need honey. Yeah. Local honey. Local bees. Yeah, that's all I got, sorry. All right, well, that's great. That's a great message out there. I mean, honey bees, if you've watched anything around um, natural food production, bees have had a tough decade, I feel like. And there's some right there. Uh, deliciousness. At any rate, tune in here Friday, this Friday, 8.30 p.m., Hunt Chef Live, Jeremiah's going to be on the beach. We don't want to see his Speedo, so stick with us here. Speedo-free like it. Speedo zone. I'm going to get you some fish, though. <laughs> Give me some fish. And wild boar. I mean, where's all the wild boar at? Somebody hook me up with a wild boar down there. Anybody in North Carolina with a wild boar, come shoot, let me know. In your back pocket. Yep. Anyhow, thanks for being here tonight. Appreciate you all. And remember, always eat what you kill. Eat what you kill out there. I'm going to press end on the other one. Press an end. Look at the hook on that sucker. 
I hate to be flogged by him. 